The Last of Us could have just been another post-apocalyptic survival horror game about a man with a gun taking down one horde of flesh-hungry monstrosities after another. Instead, Naughty Dog created not one, but two games that grabbed players by the throat from the moment they pressed start, and didn't let go until long after the credits rolled. That's because The Last of Us has always been more than just a zombie game. Set in a highly detailed, dilapidated ruin of a world populated by some of the creepiest monsters ever to creep through the horror genre, I'm looking at you clickers. The Last of Us ultimately tells one of the most hauntingly human stories in the genre to date. Some people love it for the writing and the voice acting, others for the iconic characters themselves, while others still appreciate the subtle choices woven into the gameplay. Whether you attack the problem head on, guns a-blazing, or you stealthed your way through The Last of Us, that was up to you. Whatever your reasons may be, if you two are an emotional masochist craving more of the same, well, you're in luck. I've got a few indie game recommendations that just might scratch that that hopefully not infected itch. So, if you like The Last of Us, you should try If you love The Last of Us a lot, there is a lot for you to love in the Sobo Studios' A Plague Tale Innocence. In A Plague Tale, however, you're not playing as a tall, gruff, and handsome Troy Baker type. You are Amicia Darune, a 15-year-old French girl left to look after her little brother Hugo on her own when the pair are brutally separated from their parents. A Plague Tale is, unsurprisingly, set during the time of the Black Death. But in this story, the rats have completely taken over the country. Oh, and uh, they're possessed. As Amicia, you must protect Hugo, who seems to have no survival instincts whatsoever, while carefully navigating through a rat-infested wasteland and avoiding the Inquisition, who are convinced that Hugo's blood has magical properties that can be used to end the plague? Sound familiar, anyone? Both A Plague Tale and The Last of Us are rooted solidly in the survival horror genre, featuring stealth and crafting mechanics and limited resources. Unlike The Last of Us, however, stealth is often required in the early stages of A Plague Tale, as many of the characters will kill the main character instantly should she fail to sneak past them. One reason for this is because of her limited arsenal. While Joel gets his pick of weapons throughout The Last of Us, Amicia is only armed with just a few clay pots for causing distractions, a pocket full of rocks, and a slingshot. Once you start upgrading that baby and improving your skills, however, all bets are off. One of the very first skills you can unlock is a fatal headshot. And thanks to the powers of alchemy, you can eventually use your slingshot for a wider variety of purposes including repelling rats or luring them into traps, lighting or extinguishing torches and lanterns. Like The Last of Us, A Plague Tale focuses heavily on its narrative, meaning progression is linear and mostly about finding out what happens next, typically via cutscenes and character dialogue. Like Joel and Ellie, Amicia and Hugo are at the heart of the story, with much of their narrative hinging on the evolution of their relationship. Just as Joel wanted nothing to do with Ellie at first, Amicia is thrust into her role as Hugo's sole guardian against her will, a dynamic that inevitably changes over the course of the game. Finally, if what you miss about Joel and Ellie Ellie's story are the emotional gut punches the writers knocked you breathless with, A Plague Tale is happy to serve up a second helping. In Amicia and Hugo's world, tragic, gruesome deaths are the rule, not the exception. And hey, if you like the first one, you're in luck. A second game called A Plague Tale Requiem is due to be released this October. Speaking of emotional gut punches, if you're looking for something truly brutal, be sure to take a look at... This war of mine takes the overall aesthetic and philosophies of The Last of Us and transfers them effortlessly to a 2D side-scrolling format. Set in the war-torn ruins of a vaguely Eastern European fictional city, this survival strategy game by 11-Bit Studios doesn't have a single zombie in it, but you might just feel dead inside by the time the credits start to roll. The setup is simple. You control a group of civilians struggling to survive in the skeletal remains of a city under fire. Winter is coming, and most of the characters have no no military or survival training whatsoever. They're just regular people trying to get by with what little they can salvage. Your goal is to keep them alive long enough to celebrate a ceasefire. It's a little bit like The Sims if The Sims was written by Dostoevsky. You control one survivor at a time 
pointing and clicking to move and assign them different tasks. Gameplay mostly consists of three things. Managing individual hunger, health, and mood, crafting supplies and equipment such as medicine, appliances, and furniture, and braving the dangerous city streets in search of vital materials to scavenge, trade, or steal. Once again, you'll find yourself rifling through cabinets, hacking through locked doors, and clamoring over dilapidated buildings looking for the things your survivors need to stay alive, all while keeping one ear out for enemies that could be lurking around every corner. Now, the only monsters here are human, but that doesn't mean they aren't terrifying. The city is rife with disgruntled soldiers and looters armed to the teeth, and death is just a bullet away if you're foolish or unlucky enough to wander into sniper territory. And of course, depending on your choices, your own survivors might become just as terrible. Like Joel and Ellie, they face a trial by fire that will either toughen them up or break them. There is no in-between. Each survivor has their own story, which you unlock gradually the longer you keep them alive. Instead of a single linear narrative, this War of Mine offers multiple scenarios to play through. In each of these, the war plays out a little differently, with various world events like extreme weather and economic shifts occurring at different times. Different scenarios also feature different teams of characters, so playing through multiple scenarios also lets you see how well or how poorly each group works together. The Father's Promise and Little One's DLC packs introduce scenarios with more specific narratives. But even so, progression isn't as linear here as it was in The Last of Us. Instead, this War of Mine lets you carry that weight all by yourself. Whether each survivor lives or dies depends on a dozen different choices you'll make during your playthrough. You might have to save all of them, or maybe just some of them, or you might save none of them. Need medicine to save your strongest survivor? You might be able to trade for it, but what if you can't afford it? Will you steal it from the hospital? or the elderly couple down the street? Or will you let your comrade die a slow and painful death and leave the others without a strong arm to defend them from the next group of desperate looters who decide to ransack the neighborhood? This war of mine is one difficult choice after another. Even if all of your survivors live, it's unlikely they'll survive unscathed and all too probable that others were sacrificed in their stead. These choices highlight some of the same dark themes that were woven throughout The Last of Us. In a brutal world, kindness is the hardest choice, and potentially a fatal one. Sometimes, survival isn't about choosing about who will live, who will die. You, or the enemy trying to kill you. If you like this war of mine, you might also want to check out Frostpunk, another heart-wrenching survival strategy game by 11-Bit Studios. On the other hand, if you're looking for something a little more cinematic, something with a few more zombies, perhaps you should try Like this war of mine, Deadlight is a side-scroller, and like The Last of Us, Deadlight is about a gruff family man doing his damnedest to survive a zombie apocalypse. In this cinematic survival horror platformer by Tequila Works, you play Randall Wayne, an ex-park ranger who was separated from his wife and daughter several months ago. At the start of the game, Wayne makes his way to Seattle in search of the country's last designated save point, where he hopes his family will be alive and waiting for him. Wayne, like Joel, is a survivor first and foremost, lean, mean, and capable of real brutality when the situation calls for it. The game establishes this from the very beginning, with the opening sequence showing Wayne shooting an infected woman in the head without hesitation, to the horror of others who witness the act. Playing as Wayne, you can walk, sprint, crouch, roll, jump, or climb your way through the decaying city while avoiding or confronting zombies, known as shadows, and solving simple puzzles to progress, kind of like the environmental obstacles Joel and Ellie must overcome while finding their way to the Fireflies. Limited stamina adds an extra layer of challenge to Deadlight's platforming, as you can easily run out of strength at the worst possible moment while hanging from a rafter or running too far, too fast from too many zombies. Although you always have the option to stand and fight, stealth is typically the better choice. Even if you're armed, drawing too much attention at once means almost certain death. One man can only take so many zombies at once. This ain't no Hollywood showdown. Rather than crafting your weapons in Deadlight, you salvage them. But just as you did in The Last of Us, you have options, including a fire axe, a revolver, and a shotgun. You also have a slingshot at your disposal, which can't be used as a weapon, but it can be used to break or knock down objects as needed. 
Additional collectibles, which add to Wayne's story as well as the overall lore, are scattered throughout the game, along with more practical pickups, like first aid kits. And like The Last of Us, Deadlight is very story forward, combining cutscenes and voiceover narration to delve into Wayne's story, which turns out to be far less straightforward than it seems at first. If you thought Joel was emotionally damaged, just wait until you meet the skeletons in Wayne's closet. Deadlight is a grim game from beginning to end, even in normal mode. But for those who can't pass up a dare, Nightmare Mode offers an alternate ending that is downright savage. But don't worry, I won't spoil the details for you here. Once again, family drama and trauma take the center stage. Whereas Joel had Ellie around to keep him human, Wayne is mostly on his own. Similar to The Last of Us, Deadline explores the darkest corners of loss and grief, which can infect and corrupt a person as surely as a zombie virus. But where The Last of Us balances the darkness with the spark of hope now and then, hope in Deadlight tends to be false, little more than a will-o'-the-wisp. There aren't too many differences between the original Deadlight and its remaster, but the director's cut does feature better controls, improved animations, and an extra survival arena gameplay mode if you're more into the zombies in the story. If, on the other hand, you're not looking to just survive, but thrive, you can check out our sponsor today, G Fuel. Try it if you're looking for a variety of great flavors that you can mix in with water or milk. Hey everyone, today's sponsor obviously is G Fuel. The fine folks have been sponsoring this channel for quite some time now. You guys love their product, you keep buying it, and they love working with us, so it's a win-win. In case you guys don't know, G Fuel is a supplement-based powder that you put into a water or a milk, whatever you decide based on your flavor palettes. You can try all kinds of different crazy stuff. And it's sugar-free, it's got caffeine in it, it's delicious. I have tried almost every flavor under the sun. All of them are really, really fun. I really like the limited edition ones. Um, I've been really on that Spider-Man lemonade flavor that uh, came out uh, during uh, No Way Home. Limited edition stuff all the time is coming to their website, so be sure to check out gfuel.com all the time for fun and fascinating flavors. There's also trying to choose favorites for you to check out too if you're a big person and big fan of what G Fuel has to offer. But perhaps after you've enjoyed some G Fuel and support of the channel, you're totally into experiencing a deep, dark horror story, and maybe you're ready for a little change of scenery. Maybe you want to check out If you've played any of the titles in the Amnesia series by Frictional Games, or Penumbra for that matter, you've already got a good idea of what it looks like to play Soma. Spooky monsters in an even spookier setting? Check. Hauntingly vivid hallucinations? Check. Amnesiac protagonists who literally can't throw hands to save their life? Checkmate. The best of all the Frictional Games, it's Soma that shares the strongest thematic and mechanical ties to The Last of Us, but you might not know it at first glance. Both games are set in a post-apocalyptic world, but instead of another broken down city, Soma transports you to an underwater research facility that's fallen into disrepair. Abandoned labs are creepy enough, but this one just so happens to be inhabited by sentient AI and a host of horrific human-robot hybrids. The game's protagonist, Simon Jarrett, is teleported to this lovely facility without warning during what should have been a simple brain scan. One minute, he's in a nice, clean, brightly lit doctor's office, and the next, he's trapped in a deep, dark hellscape straight out of Ridley Scott's nightmares. As much as Simon would like to know how and why this happened, his ultimate goal is much simpler, escape the facility alive. Stealth, exploration, and environmental puzzle solving are your primary means of progress. As you did in The Last of Us, you have a chance to survive even if you trip while sneaking past a monster. But unlike Joel and Ellie, Simon can't defend himself. He can only run and hide and hope he does so fast enough to throw his pursuers off his scent. Unlike most survival horror games, The Last of Us included, there's no crafting or resource management to speak of. There are some spoiler reasons why for this, as well as the obvious. Soma is all about the story and the experience, not the gameplay mechanics. But here's where the connection between the two games really starts to come into focus. Both games are linear, but both games also incorporate minor moments of player choice. These don't affect the overall direction of the story. Major plot points remain unchanged. 
They do change the player's experience of the story, sometimes in dramatic ways. With The Last of Us, these choices are often about who to kill and why. For example, with Soma, when passing by a stranger suffering through the early stages of infection, it's up to you whether to kill them on the spot or leave them to their fate. Perhaps the most memorable instance is during the rescue mission towards the end, where you decide how many people you're willing to kill in order to save someone you love. Soma is riddled with moments like this. The wreckage of what used to be a person waits to die, unable to do anything else. A robot haunted by dreams of a human existence goes insane. What do you do? Most of the choices Simon faces boils down to the same ethical dilemmas Joel and Ellie wrestled with. Is it wrong to take a life? If it will bring end to suffering? Is it ever right to make that choice for someone else? If they can no longer choose for themselves? Soma is all about asking the hard questions and leaving it up to players to find their own answers. This is reflected not only in this story, but also in the enemy design. A big part of why monsters like the clickers are so disturbing is that little bit of humanity we can still see peeking out from behind their masks. It's a tragedy, but also a threat. This could be you. It's the same with Soma's all too humanoid infected enemies. In short, whether you love the moral quandaries in The Last of Us or you're just craving some new scares in the same vein, Soma might be well worth your while. But hey, maybe first person horror is a little too intense for you. Or maybe Soma's alien-esque setting isn't just your thing. If you're a fan of something, let's say a little more retro, you might want to try One last 2D side-scroller for the road. Developed by Jasper Byrne under the name Superflat Games, the premise of Lone Survivor is exactly what it sounds like. Thanks to a viral apocalypse, the world as you know it has ended. You're on your own, trapped in a creepy apartment building that you just know has got to be overrun with infected mutants. As tempting as it would be to just hold up in your apartment forever and never go outside again, you can't. You need supplies. But that's not your only motivation. A mysterious handwritten note provides hope, however faint, that other survivors may be waiting for you to join them on the other side of the building. In Lone Survivor, however, flesh-eating monsters and the virus they carry aren't the only threats you need to worry about when venturing out to your hidey hole. You're also going to want to try and keep them from going mad. Turns out, self-isolating in a building full of zombies ain't great for your mental health. The more horrors you're exposed to and the less sleep you get, the more you'll start to hallucinate and the harder it will be to get you to tell what's real and what's not. Instead of a health meter, you can check your state of mind by looking into mirrors. The protagonist's comments offer hints as to how you're doing. In a fun Alice in Wonderland-ish twist, the mirrors also allow you to fast travel between various locations in the building and the safety of your own apartment. Much of Lone Survivor's gameplay revolves around finding creative ways to get past enemies while scavenging for food water, medicine, ammo, and other supplies to keep your nameless protagonist alive. The game treats enemy encounters in much the same way as The Last of Us does, with dynamic stealth mechanics that let you choose when to shoot them up and when to stick to the shadows. Just keep in mind that these monsters are drawn to light as well as sound, and your flashlight has limited battery power. Lone Survivor is probably the puzzliest game on this list. Physically making your way from your side of the apartment building to the other involves a lot of key finding and problem solving. The items you need to progress can sometimes be easy to miss, and the extra time you take to find them forces you to spend valuable resources. This can make your life increasingly harder going forward. It might be good news if you're the sort of person who played The Last of Us on the higher difficulty levels. And if you wish you had a choice in how things turned out for Joel and Ellie, there's more good news. Lone Survivor has multiple endings. Which one you get depends on several factors, including things like your overall mental state, what color pills you took to manage your madness, whether or not you used any mirrors, whether you killed any monsters, and delivering key items to the right place at the right time. The original Lone Survivor had a total of three endings. The director's cut introduced two more, along with a ton of improvements and bug fixes, including enhanced lighting, new side quests, extra Easter eggs, additional dialogue, and so much more. There's also a remake coming Halloween of this year titled Super Lone Survivor that will add even more content and improvements, including two new difficulty levels, relaxed and stressful. Regardless of the version, Lone Survivor is, in a word, haunting. Heavy on the atmosphere with the soundtrack every bit as eerie as The Last of Us, it's a story that lives in the quiet space between harsh reality and the darkest of nightmares. Best suited for players who stealth their way through Joel and Ellie's stories. People who live for the thrill of outsmarting monsters and cheating death one day and one breath at a time. However, on the other hand, if you're a fan of the more realistic side of survival in The Last of Us, you might be happier trying this game. Look down, look up, 
You're in Canada, knee deep in snow, with nothing to your name but the clothes on your back and your will to survive. You're on your own, caught between the wild and an abandoned tower. There's no one around to rely on but you, and no way to call for help. Welcome to The Long Dark, the first person survival game by Hinterland Studios. In The Long Dark, there is no question of if you will die, only how long you can put off the inevitable. It's not a horror game per se though. I don't know about you, but the idea of freezing to death alone in the wild sounds pretty horrifying to me. Instead, the game's emphasis on survival hones in on two themes previously explored in The Last of Us, human resilience and mortality. Both games are resolutely not about saving the world. You're not fighting for all of humanity. Your quest is more personal. You're fighting for yourself, for whatever it is that keeps you going when there's nothing to live for but life itself. For Joel, his reason to live turned out to be Ellie. In The Long Dark, your reasons are yours to discover. Precisely what kind of game The Long Dark is depends on which of the three modes you choose to play. Sandbox, Challenge, and Story Mode. One thing, however, they all have in common is an open map you can explore at your leisure. So if one of your favorite things in The Last of Us was rummaging through ruins for supplies and scraps of lore, this might be the game for you. Sandbox Mode is a pure survival sim. Gameplay revolves entirely around scavenging, hunting, crafting, and building up your shelter to stay alive for as long as you can. There are no other objectives. In order of easiest to most difficult, these include Pilgrim, Voyager, Stalker, and Interloper. Regardless of difficulty level, sandbox mode is always a little nerve wracking thanks to the permadeath feature. Dying erases your game save, forcing you to restart the game from the very beginning if you choose to try again. Challenge mode introduces more specific objectives to try and complete without dying. Some also impose time limits. Challenge mode can only be played at the Voyager difficulty level. Like sandbox mode, death means a full restart, but luckily you'll only be tackling one set of challenges at a time. Story mode, also called Winter Mute, is a narrative adventure. Unlike the other two modes, Winter Mute uses an episodic format to tell the story of Dr. Astrid Greenwood and pilot Will McKenzie. During their flight together to Canada, a geomagnetic disaster knocks human technology flat on its ass, and the duo's plane clean out of the sky. Following the crash, they are also separated, and it's up to you to help them survive long enough to reunite, and maybe even discover the true origins of the disaster. As of this recording, Wintermute is still a work in progress, with four episodes released so far, and at least one more on the way. Survival mechanics are much more fleshed out here than in The Last of Us, since they play such a vital role in all three of The Long Dark's gameplay modes. You'll have to monitor and manage various aspects of your health, including hunger, thirst, infections, mental state, temperature, and energy levels. If you are a fan of the gritty realism of The Last of Us, The Long Dark offers a less spooky but equally grim option for testing your mettle. But maybe you're the opposite. Maybe you're here for the monsters, and don't mind a bit of magic in the mix. In that case, you might like Unlike most of the other titles in this list, DAP isn't a survival horror game. It's straight up horror. It's got a lot in common with Pikmin, to be honest, but there's a lot to love here for The Last of Us fans, too. And if you happen to enjoy both, so much the better. In this top-down fantasy horror by Melting Parrot, you play as one of the titular DAP ghost-like creatures who seem somehow connected to the woods in which they live. The corrupting influence has infected the forest and the creatures in it. It's up to you to lead a gaggle of fellow Dap through the woods to safety. The Last of Us featured more than one grisly type of monster to face off or avoid over the course of the game. Dap's gallery of foes is even more varied. This is partly because the infected were all human once, while the corrupted enemies in Dap used to be different species of animals and plants. Some still retain a little resemblance to their original forms, while others have gone fully Lovecraftian. All of them horrifying. Crafting plays an important role in DAP, though the system is less complex than in The Long Dark or even The Last of Us. When DAP are rescued, they are sent to the serene, magical garden in the sky. You can tend to the garden using items you craft, materials gathered during your adventures in the world below. That is, of course, assuming you have any materials left to spend after fighting and puzzling your way through the corrupted wood. There are a few options for sneaking here. You either fight or flee from an array of creatures twisted into monsters by the spreading infection. Melee is one option, but often, especially with stronger enemies, ranged attacks are the way to go. So less Joel and more Ellie in terms of combat. 
if Ellie's bow was magical. The materials you gather in the forest can be used for crafting several useful items, including potions and fires, which provide both light and defense against certain foes. What you'll mainly be collecting though, are the DAP themselves, up to 222 of them. With The Last of Us, Joel and Ellie start out as a typical escort mission duo. As Joel, you're the big strong protector and Ellie is your precious cargo. This changes as the characters and their relationship evolve over time. But if you are into playing the hero and shepherding cute sidekicks to safety, Dap's got your back. It even cranks the responsibility gauge up to 11. Since Ellie was immune to the virus in The Last of Us, you knew early on that she at least was safe from being zombified. Not so with the Dap. Take a wrong turn and linger too long near the corruption, and your innocent little Dap will turn feral and attack their brothers and sisters. Here, the looming threat of infection is as real as it gets. No Dap is safe, and they're entirely dependent on you to protect them. Unlike Ellie, they seem to have absolutely no survival instincts, and they're definitely not as handy with the shiv. It can be fun, but also pretty stressful to be the leader of the pack. But if you prefer your sidekicks to be a little less helpless, I've got one last game recommendation up my sleeve. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking right now. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons is one, an older game, two, has been talked about to death, and three, looks way too much like something out of a fairy tale storybook to possibly have anything to do with The Last of Us. Well, as anyone who's actually played this tearjerker by Starbreeze Studios can tell you, you'd be wrong. The two have more in common than you might think. Set in a village straight out of a classic fantasy novel, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons may not be a zombie story, but it does begin with the sickness and the quest for a cure. When their father falls gravely ill, the eponymous two brothers set out on a journey over the hills and far away to the Tree of Life. There, they hope to collect magical water that can then save their father. The gameplay is as straightforward as the premise, consisting mainly of solving relatively simple environment puzzles and outsmarting your enemies, rather than killing them outright. There's no stealth here, but also no combat either. Brothers A Tale of Two Sons favors creative resourcefulness over brutal violence. Though its plot and characters are less complex, both this game and The Last of Us involved focused progression and heavily emphasized narrative development as both your motivation and reward for moving forward. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons keeps its mechanics relatively simple, but with one important twist. You're always playing as both brothers at the same time. The brothers' skills complement each other, with the older brother being stronger and bulkier, and the younger being faster and, by virtue of his size, more easily squeezed through tight spaces. So, for an example, you might have one brother lift a heavy gate while the other slips through to grab a valuable item. Side note, if you're playing this game with the keyboard, don't. It's designed with controllers in mind, as each brother has been assigned their own thumbstick for better simultaneous control. Since the game's initial release, a two-player option has been added by popular demand. The game was always intended to be a single-player experience. One reason for this is that it helps you to bond with both brothers, as they share the spotlight equally. This also ties into the relationship dynamic between the two brothers, which takes center stage in much the same way as Ellie and Joel's. Once again, you have to play as both the older, grumpier protector and the younger, more vulnerable protectee. Although this time, the two are on slightly more even ground. In other words, The Last of Us gives you a front row seat for watching Ellie and Joel's relationship evolve. But in Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, you play an active role in the brothers' relationship, an approach that will be familiar to anyone who's played Joseph Ferris's other games, A Way Out, and it takes two. Figuring out how the brothers can work together through various situations is what establishes and strengthens the bond between the brothers over the course of the game. Just like The Last of Us, this bond is the heart and soul of the game's story. And just like The Last of Us, it's highly recommended you play this one with a box of tissues handy. Yes, it may look like a gentle romp, but Brothers A Tale of Two Sons has some pretty dark moments, some of them incredibly heartbreaking. For one thing, the brothers are on the verge of becoming orphans. Their mother drowned to death years ago in a shipwreck, and their father is lying on what may as well be his deathbed. And that's all just established in just the first few minutes of gameplay. Wait till you see what happens later. There's a reason this game is on every other list of sad indie games that will make you cry. Just don't say I didn't warn you. And there you have it, eight indie games you might enjoy if you love The Last of Us. Heck, just for fun, I'll even throw in a few bonus ones coming your way. Wanderlust by Eli Seagal, The Night is Grey by Whale Stork Interactive, and The Day Before by Fantastic all look like they'll have at least a few good things in common with your favorite Naughty Dog franchise. So, if you haven't already, be sure to check them out and put them on your wish list on your respective platforms. Are there any other indie games that are similar to The Last of Us you wish we'd included on this list? 
Or do you have suggestions for other AAA games we should cover in the future? Be sure to leave your recommendations in the comments down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. And remember, this is a brand new series. So if you want to see more of them, leave a like, leave a comment. Thanks for watching. See you all soon. Bye.